This is Brent coming at you with our serratus anterior activation progressions video. I'm excited about this video because it's one of our first collaborative videos. I have to give my friend Rob Flugel a shout out. He's one of the faculty for the Maitland manual therapy courses that I had gone through a few months ago. And he came through one of my workshops, which was awesome, one of the advancements in exercise selection courses. We started talking about how to progress this particular exercise being serratus anterior activation. And here's what we kind of came up with. It started with some stuff he knew. We took some of the overactive synergist stuff that I've talked about in previous videos. And what we came up with, I think, is an exercise you guys are gonna love, especially for some of your more advanced individuals with a history of upper body dysfunction. All of my athletic trainers with overhead athletes, all of my physical therapists looking to progress their individuals outside of that rehab, kind of acute rehab program, and of course, all of my personal trainers who are working on postural dysfunction with their clients. I'm gonna have my friend Yvette come out. She's gonna show the Sarman technique that this kind of all started from first. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and put your forearms against the wall, parallel, just wider than shoulder width. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the friction from the wall to resist upward rotation of the scapula to start activating the serratus anterior. Now the hard part is, of course, keeping tucked under and drawn in. So let's go ahead and see that. She's gonna slide her arms against the wall. It's actually her body weight against the wall that's creating some friction. Good, let's see that again. All right, so this is not a bad exercise. I do have my little issues with it. I think it kind of limits how much flexion we can get. Of course, if we limit flexion, we're not getting all the upward rotation we can. From my math, from my refinements of the upper body dysfunction model, I think the subscapularis has a propensity to get overactive for serratus anterior. The weight of vader scapuli has a propensity to get overactive to stabilize the scapula. And then of course we have pec minor as well. So I would like to find methods of reciprocally inhibiting those muscles and I think we can do that fairly effectively on this exercise. As well as the friction against the wall to me is kind of bothersome. It usually doesn't end up being very even. You'll find people kind of get stuck at different points in the wall as you kind of go up the wall higher and higher, some people's arms will come away from the wall and there'll be less friction. It's just not very even resistance throughout. So first things first, let's figure out how to fix the friction thing because I think then we can work on the reciprocal inhibition thing and get this completely straightened out and we can show you guys some really hard progressions. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna have a vet put a foam roll against the wall and then she's gonna start with her hands against that. Now, this alone is a progression, guys. It takes a lot more to stabilize this foam roll against the wall than it does to have the forearms against the wall. But as I mentioned before, this is progressions from our other video. If you guys want to go back to serratus anterior activation, you guys will see some of the beginning exercises I use. I'm going to cue Yvette to draw in. Glutes tight, tuck under. All right. The biggest cue you're going to have to give here is people want to start with the, fo the foam roll in the middle of their forearm. You need to make sure they start with the foam roll on their hands and probably their hands a little higher than they normally would to start, otherwise you will run out of foam roll. Just gonna draw in, now go ahead and push up. You guys can see we have nice, smooth flexion. We have all the upward rotation we can get because if that can actually lean forward and the wall, her face doesn't get in the way of the wall. All right, and back down. Go ahead and this time I want you to really concentrate as you're lifting your arms. I want you to depress your scapula. Good. So depressing her scapula reciprocally inhibits her levator scapulae. That happens a lot easier when we have a foam roll because it's a nice and smooth start. We don't get that initial elevation. Let's go ahead and come back down. Good. And back up. There's also not as so much resistance on the way back down, which I appreciate because the pec minor is definitely one of those muscles that has a propensity to get really overactive for an inhibited serratus anterior. The way we had it done before, there was a lot of friction pulling the arms back down. Remember downward rotation and depression is what the pec minor does and we're already protracting to get more serratus anterior activity. So that just pulling the arms down might reinforce that overactivity of the pec minor. All right, let's see one more before I make this even tougher on you. Now the kind of paradoxical, weird muscle that comes into play a lot with serratus anterior inhibition is the subscapularis will often try to take over to stabilize the, the shoulder and the scapulothoracic 
shoulder girdle stability. It doesn't work out very well, obviously, for the human body and creates us a lot of postural dysfunction, so we need to find a way to inhibit that muscle as well. And all we have to do is external rotation. So what we're going to have Yvette do is she's actually going to take a very weak, this is a light, light, light fit loop. She's going to put it around her forearms. This is a little tricky to get set up on your own, just so you know, guys. Get, take it, it'll take a little bit of practice. Now, what I've done is if she has a fit loop around her forearms, and I cue her to make sure that she stays parallel here, as in elbows don't flare out and hands can't collapse inward. She has to then work to keep an external rotation at the shoulders, which is going to reciprocally inhibit subscapularis and ensures that this stays totally serratus anterior. We don't have subscapularis coming in to try to stabilize the shoulder. So let's go ahead and try this. How's that feel? All right. This time I want you to try to not elevate in here. Good. All the way up. And this is actually a pretty good progression right here. This is very challenging for a vet. I see her having a real hard time maintaining external rotation. So I would probably let her work on this. I'm going to go ahead and take this a little further just so you guys see the other option. All right, so if I take this foam roll from her, I can go a little further. Oh, hold on. I can go a little further by using a stability ball. Guys, this is tough. This is super, super tough. All right, so she's got to now keep parallel here. All right, so keep those wrists pressing outward. Elbows stay tucked in. Draw in. Good. Now try to press up. Keeping those scapula depressed. Good. Try to keep your wrists straight. Like I said, this might be a step beyond where I would have a vet go if she was training with me. But I wanted to show you guys this progression. You can make this incredibly tough just by backing somebody's feet up. Go ahead and back your feet up a little bit. That creates more resistance into the ball. Go ahead and push up. And it makes it harder and harder to maintain that scapular stability, that scapular depression, maintain tucked under, and maintained external rotation. How are you feeling? You're starting to feel it in your serratus anterior? Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I did this particular variation, I got to eight, which uh, maybe not all that impressive. It took me a little while to get to three sets of 20 within a, a warm-up circuit. I think you guys are going to find this incredibly challenging. I think you guys are going to get some great results. Pay very, very careful attention to your cues on this exercise, guys. Make sure that people aren't dragging down their arms, recruiting a lot of pec minor. You're keeping scapula depressed. And of course, forearms parallel, pressing out with their wrist to keep external rotators activated. Make sure you keep them drawn in and tucked under. If somebody can do all of this, I think you guys will find that the strengthening that you get, the reinforcement of the mobility you guys have been working on, will stick around a lot longer. I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this technique. I'll talk with you soon.